here again. Hey, I wanted to share with you guys, watch this video up until the end because there's some really important information at the end of this. This is gonna be a great encouragement for all of us on this amazing week. God bless you. What I wanna to talk to you about is that this weekend is what I call, and most pastors would call, Super Bowl Sunday. Because really, man, it's our Super Bowl because we're celebrating the whole reason for the Christian faith. And that is that Jesus Christ, who was once in the grave, had beat death and gave us eternal life. And I want to show you something for a moment and show you a connection with the Old Testament. And uh, I love this because I, I see how the Old Testament and the New Testament are so connected. And it gives me great joy uh, as a Christian, not even as a pastor, just as a Christian, how, how deep and how wide our heritage goes. And it starts way back in, I look at the story of Moses. And Moses was a guy like anybody else, um, but is that if you watch this whole story and go study it, man, in the book of Exodus, it's an amazing story. But what's cool about it is that when you really unpack the story of Moses and the nation of Israel coming out of Egypt, what you'll see is the type and shadows of Jesus Christ and what we're fixing to celebrate on this weekend. See, they celebrate something, the Jewish people and our heritage celebrate something called Passover. And I want to explain that for just a moment what that means for us. See, Passover is what the Jewish celebration is of the Jews, the nation of Israel coming out of Egypt. But what happened? Well, what happened is, is after all of these plagues, I believe there are seven or eight of them, after all of these plagues, Pharaoh finally came to a place, man, that he was not going to, his heart was so hardened that he was not going to let the people of Israel go. No matter what Moses did with his staff and no matter what was going to happen, he was going to make, he wasn't going to let them go. So finally God spoke to Moses and he said to Moses, he said, Moses, he said, tonight I'm going to do something. He said, tonight what I want you to do is I want you to go home and I want you to tell all the nation of Israel to go find a lamb, an unblemished lamb, one without any defects. And what you're going to do is I want you to slaughter that lamb. And then what I want you to do is take that lamb and I want you to take the blood of that lamb and I want you to, to wipe it on the doorpost of every home. And those that don't have a lamb who can't afford one, let them go into a house to someone who does. But man, share it and do this. For tonight, the nation of Israel will be free. So that's what he does. Moses goes to the nation of Israel and he tells them, hey, this is what you need to do. And so they do it. They, 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 they cut the lamb and they take the blood of the lamb and they put it on the doorpost. And every family had a lamb. They were doing it all over the place. And then here's the cool, not the cool part, it's actually kind of a scary part, but here's the unique part of this whole story is that that night, what God allowed to happen was an angel of death went over the region of Egypt. And during this time, Every person to whose home was not covered by that blood, the firstborn child was killed. I know it's sad when you think about it, right? But see, now here's where the connection is. Now we come back to Jesus. See, Jesus is God's firstborn of many. He's his firstborn son, Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, scripture teaches that he is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. See, Jesus and Moses, there's a huge connection. Moses is the foreshadow of who Jesus is. And what Moses did was bring the people out of captivity, out of slavery, out of bondage. And Jesus does the very same thing for you and I by taking us out of slavery of sin and the bondages of sin. By dying on the cross and his blood was shed so that you and I could live out the life that we were created to live. Just like the nation of Israel, God's beloved people, he calls them out of that place and brings them into the land of promise, flowing with milk and honey. And God does the same thing now through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. And so in the bottom of, uh, of this video, I'm gonna put some links that you can follow and learn more about Passover. I've had someone ask me recently, can Christians celebrate Passover? And I say a resounding yes. Because one of the things that they do when, when celebrating Passover is they go through their home and they remove all leavened products like bread and pastries and cookies. I know, I know, good stuff, right? 
but they remove all that and that's a semblance of removing sin from your house. And then for seven days they do nothing, they don't, they don't touch any of that stuff, but on the last day of that they celebrate it with a feast. Matter of fact, you can find this in Exodus chapter 13. It describes this whole seven day process. It's, a, it's an amazing story. But see, now with Jesus, he came and, and got, got, took the sin of us away. But sometimes, man, we fall into bad times, don't we? Sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we do things. Sometimes we just need to have a reset. Amen? We need to come back to God and say, God, I'm just resetting. And that's what I love about the day of resurrection. It's because it's an opportunity for you and me to come back to the Father and say, man, man, I, I'm celebrating what Jesus did for me on the cross. And not just the cross, because here's the deal. The cross is empty. Isn't that amazing? It's empty. The tomb is empty. Jesus now sits at the right hand of the Father. And the Bible says he makes intercession for you and I. And so, as we step into this Passover week or Resurrection Week, whatever you feel like you, you want to call it, you can celebrate Passover or you can call it Resurrection Day. Whatever you feel like calling it. But here's the deal. Take the time throughout this week and celebrate. Take the time to maybe reconnect with your Heavenly Father. Maybe you're watching this and you've, you've drifted a little bit in your faith. Maybe you haven't been living out the life that God desires for you to live. Maybe you've gotten so busy with so much stuff that you haven't spent that time with your Father. What a great opportunity for us to reconnect with our Heavenly Father on this Resurrection Day. Matter of fact, here's what we're going to be doing at Epic Life Church. I told you I had something special for you, and that is what we're going to do is we're going to have a parking lot service. A parking lot service. And what that means is we're inviting, I've already talked to the city and they gave us a thumbs up. We're inviting everybody from Epic Life to jump in their cars and come and park in front of the church. Try to back in, keep us a little bit, keep that front space open, please. Don't park in our open space by the building itself. But you have the whole middle section. You left sections over here to the left. You got all the back section. We're pulling out the sound systems. We're gonna put a little platform out there so y'all can see the short guy up here preaching, right? And we're gonna get up there and we're gonna have worship and we're gonna celebrate the resurrection of a king, Jesus Christ. Or in Jewish terms, they say Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua is Jesus, and the word Yeshua means complete salvation, means complete, I love that. And Hamashiach means Messiah, the Messiah, Jesus, the Messiah. And we're going to celebrate that this week, and I can't wait to celebrate it with you. So here's what you get to do. Man, invite people, let people know. I think we've had, when big, our service is big, I think we've had up to 50 to 60 cars. And I hope we don't have to ever turn anybody away. This would be a great Sunday to have to do that. So you want to get there on time, you want to get there early, okay? So make it a point to join us on Easter Sunday. And what we are going to do is we're going to have uh, someone out there with gloves on, and we're going to pass out um, communion that's already sealed. And so then you're going to participate in communion. Jesus said, as often, matter of fact, we believe that the meal that Jesus had where he, was, where he gave the last commandment of communion was on the Passover. It was a Passover meal. And so he says, man, to do this as often as you think of me. And so when we gather together in our cars, we're going to do this. We're going to celebrate. We're going to celebrate the Passover. So here's what we need. We need you to first, when you come into the parking lot and you park, think about other people. So maybe start on one end and work your way over. Don't park in a weird place way over here, but kind of fill in as we go. The other thing too is um, stay in your cars. Let's honor those in authority and stay in our vehicles, okay? And uh, we will get something, we'll get the, the, the stuff to you. There will be no, uh, we're gonna try to live stream it, but there, will, there, there won't be any notes, so, or the, the images that we normally have on a Sunday service. So what you'll need to do is make sure you download the YouVersion Bible app, because when you're on that location, as soon as you open up and press events, you're gonna see the notes in there for my message. Make sure you pass that along also. Guys, I love you. I can't wait to celebrate the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Again, in the bottom right below here, I'm gonna put some links for you that you can follow and investigate for yourself Passover. I think it's an amazing thing that we get to celebrate and we get to enjoy our inheritance with Jew and Gentile coming together as one. This is Pastor Mike. I love you guys. Can't wait to see you. We'll see you Sunday. God bless you.